Hallelujah. It's so nice, I got to read it twice. Hallelujah. But, I'm, but we're dealing with this scripture uh, in, in Romans 8 and 28 in the King James. It says, and we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. But I, but, but I, but I like, you know, like I said, I like the New Living Translation because it helps us to understand that that the writer didn't mean that just all things, you know, just, they just happened to work together, you know. You know, and, and Romans 8, 20, and the New it says, and we know that God causes. The God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. As I look at this particular scripture, and, 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 and I love the scripture, I mean, you know, eyes wide open 2021 for this scripture. It's one of the greatest statements in the Bible, and it speaks directly to all of God's promises. It's not uh, uh, contained in itself. This particular scripture speaks to all of God's promises. Oh, y'all help me say all. Oh, oh, oh thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I hear you through the mask. I hear you through the mask. Hallelujah. It's not something that you tell someone after they have experienced a tragedy in their lives. Baby, you know all things work together for the good. I don't know what's going. I don't, look, yeah, it ain't good while it's working, but it's, we make stuff up. It ain't good while it's working, but it's working for the good. It's making stuff up. That's not what the scripture said. It said all things work together. It's something that you personally experience and testify about because you know what God has done for you in your life. And when you know what God has done for you in your life, then you can say all things. That God causes all things. That knowledge, hallelujah, that knowledge that we talked about last week that we know, that knowledge that you know about the word of God, that knowledge that you know about God, that knowledge when you begin to, hallelujah, amass the knowledge, it strengthens your faith. Knowledge is understanding gained through experience and study. Hallelujah. I, I can't just hear it. I've got to do it. Why is knowledge important? Hosea 4 and 6, we read it last week. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge and you reject knowledge. There's some things that we find out about the word of God that some people just say, I'm not going to do. Well, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so he said, it, it, it just says, I, and so he says, because you rejected knowledge, I'm going to reject you. I shall also reject thee that, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Look, look, look what else speaks to the importance of knowledge. If we go into the New Living Translation, I mean, into the New Testament, uh, uh, in, in 2 Peter 1, 5 to 8, look at this. It says, and besides this, giving all your diligence, add to your faith virtue and to your virtue knowledge. Knowledge is important. It's, it's, it's part of the building blocks. It's, it's what God expects us to have. He said, add to your faith virtue, to your virtue knowledge, to your knowledge temperance, to your temperance patience, to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they will make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. All of these things, when you add, even adding to your knowledge increases your knowledge. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And so it is, it is not the knowledge that you know that sanctifies you. It is the knowledge that you do or apply to your life that sanctifies you. Hallelujah. I told y'all in Bible study, I write that down. I'm going to say that again. Hallelujah. And look at Romans 2 and 13. Because Romans 2 and 13, hallelujah, confirms what I said. It says, for merely listening to the law does not make us right with God. 
It is obeying the law that makes us right in his sight. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you. I don't, I don't want to be right in somebody else, ju just in somebody else's sight. I, I, I want to make sure that I'm right in God's sight first. And if I'm right in God's sight, I'm going to be right in your sight. But I can be right in your sight, hallelujah, trying to please you and not be right in God's sight. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so God makes us right or righteous because when it says I, I made right in his sight, that's talking about righteousness. And so God makes us right or righteous based on our obedience or application of his word to our lives. That's how we're made right in the sight of God, based upon our obedience to his word and the application of his word in our lives. I don't know about you, I want to be made right in the sight of God. I want God to look at me and say, yeah, 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 you, you are right. You know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be saying God's all right. I want God to say I'm right. And I'm righteous in his sight. And so today, 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 we're going to take a look at this particular scripture further. Because I mean, this is a scripture, you know, like I said, it says, and we know that God causes all things to work together for the good of them who love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. But we just, you know, we shorten it to say, oh, all things work together for the good. We like the, we just like the meat. We don't like the, re all, we just, all things work together. We sing it in the song. All things are working for my, well, yeah, they can. I'm not saying the song is wrong. They can, but it just doesn't happen automatically. Yeah, it just doesn't happen auto automatically. And so we want to look at this thing. We want to further look at it and, and look at the fact that God causes things to happen. They don't just happen. God causes things together. God causes them to work together. God causes all things to happen. God makes all things work together. Things don't just work together for the good. We serve a God that can cause things to work together for the good. That's who I serve. I serve a God that can cause things that wasn't supposed to work out for the good. He can cause them to work out for the good for me because of what he think about me. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Look, look, look. Pastor, what you talking about? What you talking about? What do you mean? Well, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Look at 1 Corinthians 3 and 6. Because there's a whole lot of unsaved folk talking about what God has done for them. So we want to clear this up. We want to clear this up. First of all, let's look at 1 Corinthians 3 and 6. It says, I planted the seed in your hearts, and Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. See, I can plant, you can water all day long, but without God, it's not going to grow. Amen? God causes it to grow. Y'all with me? Now, God causes our actions to grow. He causes our actions to be successful. He causes our actions and things to work together. God causes them. They just don't happen by themselves. Maybe it'll work out for you. And don't tell me that because I serve a God who causes. I ain't looking for things to just work out. Maybe it'll work out. Maybe things will get better. I look, that ain't what I'm looking for. I'm not serving a God. Well, I got to, I got to rely on maybe. No, I, I, that's not who I serve. God causes. And so I, I, I want you to understand this. I want you to understand that God causes things to work together for the good. God causes that. It doesn't just happen on its own. And I don't want you to be confused with this particular scripture because a lot of people get this confused. Look at, look at Matthew 5, 40, 4 to 45. And, and, and this is when Jesus is saying, he said, but I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. And we always stop there. I mean, we, I, 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 but this 45 is real interesting because it says, in that way, you will be acting as true children of your father in heaven. He gives us the reason why he's saying love your enemies and why he's saying do good to, to them that uh, uh, pray for them that persecute you. He says, he says, because look at what your father in heaven does. 
For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good. And he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. And so it's not about because you love me, I give you sun. Or because, you know, God's not saying because you love me, I give you sun. And because you don't, everywhere you walk, it's going to be dark. He's not saying if you love me, I'll give you rain. And everywhere you go, if you don't love me, it's going to be dry. He says, I give sun and rain to the just and the unjust, to the good and to the evil. That's why I'm telling He said, and he said, that's why I'm telling you to love your enemy. You can't just love those who do good to you. He says, take my example. Because I, I, I do good in everybody. I rain on them. I give everybody sun regardless of how they feel about me. Amen, amen, y'all see that? And so we see here that people who do evil and people who are unjust can feel like God is blessing them. I got sun too. I got sun on my face too. I get rain on my crops too. God must love me. No, that's not, no, that ain't it. There's some things that that sinners get that we get as just because God just said, look, I'm just going to get to everybody because I just not I'm going to show love. I'm going to show as as much as I can to to everybody. Right. So he said, I'm going to do that. But don't mistake that. Don't mistake that for the fact that just God just blesses the sinners. Amen. Amen. He just says, I, I, I got to give you the right example. If I'm telling you to love everybody, regardless if they hate you, I got to show you that I can do it too. All right? All right? So Christians are thankful. Y'all got to get this one. We're thankful, but we're not excited about getting what sinners get. Right? We, 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 we get, because of our relationship with God, we get to set our sights higher because God causes things to happen for us. I, I, get, I get to set my side. I ain't excited just because, ooh, everybody get this. You know, so everybody's getting a stimulus check. Yeah, be thankful, but set your sights higher. That ain't your blessing. That's just rain. That ain't your blessing. That's sun. It's happening, but it's happening to everybody. You don't get excited. If sinners is getting it, then I ain't excited about it. I set my sights higher. Oh, yeah, I'm going to take it. I'm going to spin it. But I just say, whoo, God is blessing. Whoo, look at God bless. No, he's just raining on the just and the unjust. Oh, hallelujah. Every sinner got one, too. I ain't excited. I ain't excited. Every sinner got one, I ain't excited. I ain't excited. Look, look, 1 Peter 3 and 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Yeah, they're going to get some rain and they're going to get some sun. But they, 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 God's ears ain't open to them. You get, you get what you get, but don't ask me for nothing. Oh, hallelujah. Don't that sound like when the parents are upset? You get what you get. Look, you, if the water come on, be thankful, but don't you ask me for nothing else. If it's warm in here, you better be thankful. Because your actions don't allow you to get anything else. Oh, anybody else still in this one? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is particular about what he causes and who he causes it for. Mm. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good. God causes things to happen for the righteous people. And he causes people to be righteous. He causes things to happen for the righteous people. And he also causes them to become righteous. Look at, look at, look at Romans 1 and 7. The good news tells us how God makes us oh right. The good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. He puts it in front of us and says, if you only believe. If you only believe. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently. 
Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God makes us right. Look at Romans 3 and 30. There is only one God, in case anybody ever had a question if, if it was more than one. There is only one God, and he makes people right with himself only by faith. Whether they are Jews or Gentiles, when people live by faith and do what is right, God causes them to be righteous, and when they're righteous, God causes things to happen for the righteous. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Look at 1 John 3 and 7. Woo! Y'all got y'all getting this. Hallelujah. Look, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God calls us. Hallelujah. God causes things to be, uh, people to be righteous, and he causes things to happen for those who are righteous. <clears throat> John 1, 3 to 7. 3. John, 1 John, 3 and 7. <clears throat> no, devil, you can't have my voice. <clears throat> Dear children, <clears throat> Don't let anybody deceive you about this. Woo! See, he don't want y'all to hear this one. He don't want y'all to hear this. Y'all get, get in your Bible. Mark it in your Bible. Don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous. Even as Christ is righteous. Look at this, look at this, look at this. When people don't do what is right, Oh, I just slipped. That means you're not righteous. And if you're not righteous or right in his sight, God can't make nothing happen for you. You're stuck with the sinners looking for the rain in the, in the sun. Rain on me, son. But when you're right in his sight, oh, Hallelujah. When a purpose is, person is righteous or right in the sight of God, we see that God treats them differently. I'm sorry. Some of y'all parents, y'all won't admit it, but you got some favorites. You know, it's just, you know, it's just something that you just want to do because, because they, they treat you right. They do what's right. You ain't belling them out every five seconds. It's just something that you just, you don't want to, but you just do. Well, God is saying, look, 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 I mean, look. Why do you keep saying, Lord, Lord? And don't do what I say. Why? God keep, God, you know, he said throughout the Bible, y'all. It's like, you know, yeah, I understand. You know, there is forgiveness and that. But I mean, he's got a way that he's looking at the righteous. Those who are doing right in his sight. It's important to him. Look at this, look at this, look at this. James 5 and 16. It says, confess your sins each to the other. And pray for each other so that you might be healed. But then he says something differently, that he begins to separate these others. He says, the earnest prayer of a righteous person. He didn't say, all of y'all who praying, all of y'all who say y'all love me, all of y'all who come to church. He didn't say that. He said, the earnest prayer of a righteous person, the one who's doing right in my sight, the one who's living right by faith. Mm. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. What is that saying about the prayer from an unrighteous person? A person who is not right in his sight. I'm not talking about the sinner. 
I'm not talking about the one who practices sin, who has not even accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. But we've got those who have accepted him, but won't live righteously. You refuse to live right in his sight. Oh, hallelujah. See, because if God, if, 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 if everybody was living right, it wouldn't be no need for this scripture because these scriptures are only for those who are saved. This is only for saved folk. The only thing the Bible is saying to the unsaved is you need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But when it begins to define who has a great power in their prayer and produces wonderful results, it's trying to tell the Christian, look, you need to start doing right. You are, you are oxymoron Christian. you two words that don't, they ain't supposed to be together. A Christian that prays and does not have power is a Christian that's not living right. Every Christian that is living right has power in their prayer. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Y'all can write that one down and quote me. Woo, thank you, Jesus. God causes a righteous person's prayer to have great power and produce wonderful results. Oh, yes, he does. He causes it to happen. Mm. Look at, look at, look at, look at this. I mean, that, that, that's good news. That's good news. I'm not, I'm not doing this for my health. I'm not doing it for the church. I'm not doing it for the pastor. I'm not doing it for the denomination. I'm doing it so that I can be right in the sight of God and I have power in my prayer. Woo! Hallelujah! Yes, yes, yes. Look at, look at, look, 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 look at Psalm 34, 19. Psalm 34, 19 says this, the righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to rescue, comes to the rescue each time. It doesn't say the Lord comes to the rescue some of the time. Lord comes to the rescue when he feel like it. Lord comes to the rescue, hallelujah. Well, no, God, the righteous person is going to face many troubles. But the Lord comes to the rescue every time, each time, all the time. Why? Because he causes things to work for our good. He causes it to happen because of your state of righteousness. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He causes righteous people to be rescued. I want, you, I want to show you something. I, I, you know... I, Look at 1 Samuel. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If I, if I can squeeze out what I need out of this. Because I see, I, I, I need y'all to get this. I need y'all to understand this. Hallelujah. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't live, hallelujah, I don't serve a God where I got the hope and the pray and the wish and, the, and you know, I'm hoping, you know, God, if it be thy will and will it work out and I don't know when and, you know, I don't, that's not who I, that's not who I serve. I know, but, but God is saying, look, you got to meet the qualifications. And I don't ask for much. Matter of fact, I, I spelled it all out to you in my word. I told you what you need to do. And in case it was too hard, I gave you my, my, my spirit to give you the power to do it. What else do I have to do? Come down in flesh and show you how to do it? Oh, I, do, I did that too. What else do you need? First Samuel 36 to 8. Bible says this. Now, now David was in great danger. Mm. Because all of his men were very bitter about losing their sons and daughters. And they began to talk of stoning him. But David found strength in the Lord his God. The King James said he encouraged himself in the Lord. It says, and then he said to Abathar, the priest, bring me the ephod. So Abathar brought it. Then David asked the Lord, should I chase after these band of raiders? 
Will I catch them? And the Lord told him, yes, go after them. You will surely recover everything that was taken from you. I want you to, I want you to see something. I want you to see something. I want you to see something. Because I don't know about you, and I can't put this on you. I just put it on myself. But when we look at this, we look at it as though God uh, 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 went in and, 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 and gave him his future. That God, God looked to the future and said, hey, yes, I see in your future that, 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 that you will overcome and regain everything. We look at God as some kind of fortune teller. And all God did was go down and, and look to the, and tell David what was going to happen if he tried. But as I look at it and understand who we serve, I understand that, that, that when David asked, when God said, yeah, go ahead and do it, you will uh, overtake them and you will recover. He said, because I'm going to cause it to happen. It ain't going to happen by chance. I'm going to cause it to happen. Go ahead. Go after him. Go ahead. You're going to get it because, because of who you are and because of how you serve me and because of your right standing in my sight, I'm going to cause it to happen. Woo! Hallelujah. It was not something that was going to work itself out. We look at it like it's going to work itself out. They don't just work themselves out. Things just don't work themselves out for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Things don't just work themselves out. God works it out for you. Amen. You ain't in it by yourself. You ain't praising him by yourself. You ain't serving him by yourself. You ain't serving him for nothing. It's because I'm serving it so that God can be in trouble with me. When I'm in trouble, God's in trouble. Hallelujah. When I go through, God goes through. Why? Because of how I live. Oh. God was working it out. He was telling them what he already had planned for them. God caused this victory to happen. Ooh, every victory that you had in your life, everything that you've gone through, every, every lost key that you found. God causes things to work together for your good. If your wife told you where they were, God told her to tell you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't live by happenstance. I don't live by if it be thy will. I know your will because I know your word. And I'm living by your word. I hope I'm helping somebody. We know that God calls us. Oh yeah, oh, if you have a seed I plant, I know God is the one that's growing it. I don't grow a seed. I don't even make the dirt that is in. Right, quite as a cap, I don't even make the seed. Everything that I have is God's. The only thing that I'm doing is following the direction that it needs to happen for it to grow. I've got to take the seed and put it in the ground, cover it with the dirt, and it has to be watered. But everything that happens out of my sight is God doing it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I want you to see this last scripture. This last one, I'm done. And it's just, it's just so that we understand that the day that we're living in, hallelujah, and no matter what's going on, no matter what it looks like outside, no matter what this world looks at, like. I saw something on the, um, uh, 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 on Facebook said, you know, uh, uh, um, only Jesus could make America great again. It was so many things wrong with that statement. First of all, America ain't never been great. It's just a better place to live than some other countries. But for us, it ain't never been great. But it's, I, I'd, I'd rather live there than some other countries. But Jesus is, 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 but, but Jesus is never coming to, to make America great. 
He only focuses on the individual who decides to live right. He said, I promise you abundant life. Now everybody in America decide to live for Jesus, then, then, then everybody in America can have abundant life and then the country can look. But Jesus only came back for the individual to have a personal relationship with God. It's individual first, then the individual affects the group. That's why we come together. That's why we don't, we, we don't, we don't, we don't fail to assemble ourselves together because there's strength in numbers of those who love the Lord. You know how much power is supposed to be in this room right now? You don't know how much prayer power is supposed to be here? Every time I cut on the 6 o'clock prayer and the 12 o'clock prayer, you know how much power is supposed to be on that phone call? Woo, thank you, Jesus. Look at this, Acts 2, 17 to 21. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Woo! In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day uh, of the Lord arriving. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Woo! Hallelujah. Think about that. God's going to cause me to be saved. Because I'm going to call on the name of the Lord. God calls us everything. The righteous, the unrighteous ain't calling out the name. Uh, they're calling on Jesus. Hallelujah. God calls everything to happen for the righteous. God calls all things to work together for the good. And matter of fact, when you look at it, it's on purpose based upon uh, 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 your actions. So I know I said last week that, 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 that when the song said, uh, I said, well, guys, you got to be intentional, but, but, but you, your, you being intentional then allows God to be intentional. But God's not going to be intentional, hallelujah, if you're not intentional. So all things can work together for your good if you're righteous, and God can be intentional if you're intentional. But you, if you ain't intentionally living right, don't expect God to intentionally make all things work together for your good. Come on, we stand. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. We're talking about intentionally living right. Intentionally living right. Hallelujah. God said, if you intentional, so will I be. Hallelujah. Don't just claim. Don't just name it, claim it. You can't claim everything working together for your good. You got to live so that everything works together for your good. Hallelujah. Tell him. We get, we, 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 we get satisfied with a little when we serve a God who does, does exceedingly and abundantly above all. You can ask or think. Hallelujah. 